Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday. We especially want to say a welcome to all those who are watching us on the live stream this morning. This is indeed a special day because we are welcoming in our midst today the Reverend Canon Michael Spencer. He will be preaching uh, for us today and he will also be meeting with the vestry after worship today. I uh, want to say thank you to the uh, Altar Guild for the wonderful way they have decorated the uh, sanctuary today for Pentecost and just throughout the Easter season. Every week has just been very special and we appreciate your hard work and your dedication to that. We've got kids that are going to be joining us in procession this morning. Um, if nursery attendants want to come and join our procession, feel free to as well. And today also, uh, after the children's message, the children will go on to faith formation, correct? All right. And then they'll come back in later for Eucharist. And I hear they're going to come back with a surprise, too. All right. So we'll be on the lookout for that. And now we take a few moments to prepare our hearts for worship. the apostles' zeal. They, they declare in new tongues the wonderful works of God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be the kingdom, now and forever. Alleluia, come Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of the great people with your love. Alleluia.
Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It's time for the children's message. Come on up. Good morning to you. Thank you for being a part of our procession today. It was lots of fun, wasn't it? Oh, wonderful. Welcome. Okay. How is everybody today? Good. You looked up there on what? Uh huh. I saw you do that when we were coming in. Yes. Yeah. That's cool. That's one of the things that we do often in the servant, don't, servants, don't we, as we, we bow before the Lord's altar. Absolutely. Well, if you were here last week, and I know, I know a couple of you were here last week, we talked about a story. There was a really big word that we used. It was called ascension. And that just means going up, like you ascend the stairs, or the queen ascends the throne, going up. And I told you the story about um, Jesus, how after he had, had died and rose again from the dead, he spent lots of time, he spent 40 days actually, with his special friends, the disciples. And then he went back up into heaven. But before he went up into heaven, he gave them some really special instructions. He said, I want you to go into the city, stay in the city of Jerusalem. That's kind of like saying, stay in Pickerington. You know, hang out in Jerusalem. And that's really about all they were doing. They were just hanging out in Jerusalem. And in a way, they were just kind of like this liquid hanging out and you know it was maybe they were maybe a little excited about things but not a whole lot just kind of like this water just maybe a little bit of bubbling over but not a whole lot okay and so do you remember what jesus promised them he promised them and we've actually already said the word a couple times he promised them the holy spirit god's holy spirit he said was in well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, you, you still have a lot to learn, and I do too. We all keep learning, don't we, about Jesus? And that's why we're here, isn't it? Because we need to learn. We want to learn more about Jesus. So, so he promised them the Holy Spirit, and he said... not doing a whole lot you know they probably talked to each other about Jesus and said hey remember when Jesus was here with us and we had that last supper with him and he told us to when we, whenever we have the bread and wine um, of the Lord's Supper we're to remember him and that's what we do here isn't it um, so they were talking to each other about remember the fun times we had with Jesus but they really weren't sharing anything with anybody else other than in their circle of friends and so they waited and waited and waited, and then the promised Holy Spirit came into their life. Well, let me just show you here. My apologies to the altar guild if this gets messy. <laughs> okay, oh, see. See, I told you, Dieter, I have post-it notes everywhere. Okay, so they were just kind of hanging out, and then all of a sudden, whoosh, the Holy Spirit comes. Wow, look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at that. That's like Mentos and Coke. Yeah, Mentos and Coke. Oh, I didn't know that. Maybe next year, maybe next year we can do that. Cool. All right. So, so the point in all this is the Holy Spirit gave them incredible power and energy to share the message of Jesus with others. And it's like this was bubbling over. 
the disciples, the friends of Jesus were bubbling over. So I got a song to teach, okay? I still think that honey looks like spring. Yeah, okay. Actually, it's vinegar and baking soda, actually is what it is. Yes, okay. So um, here's the song I want to share with you. Um, Jesus' love is a bubbling over. Jesus' love is a bubbling over. Jesus' love is a bubbling over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't y'all think you can do that? Let's stand up and do that. Come on. Maybe the choir can help us. Everybody can stand up, you know. We're all supposed to be bubbling over, right? All right. Okay. Jesus' love is a bubbling over. Jesus love is a bubbling over. Jesus love is a bubbling over. Yes. Oh yes. What that fun? <laughs> okay. One more, one more thing. All right. Stickers. You get stickers. Now I can put it on my bedroom wall. Okay. Is that where you put the stickers that I give to you on yeah. Sundays when I have them? Okay. Well, well this is a sticker, if I get it off of here, that, what's a, what is that? It's a church. You can tell the congregation. It's, it's a church. It's a church because it has yeah. a cross on it. Yes, it has a cross on it. And that's to remind us that we are supposed to be, according to Jesus, a church that bubbles over with the love of Jesus. And we are the church, right? Because the church is more than the building. The church is God's people sharing the love of Jesus. Let's have a prayer. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus to us and for sending the promised Holy Spirit. Help us to bubble over with love and joy and peace and kindness, not just here in the church building, but all over the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you. And now you have faith formation time. And I'm just going to put all this stuff right up here. Honestly, that sticker kind of looks like the front of the church. It is, yeah. There you go. All right. And now we continue with the readings. And... There might be something a little special in this Acts 2 reading. We've got some extra readers this morning that are going to help out with that. So just listen and watch. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of the Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of a fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And this sound the crowd get at this and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in native in the native language of each amazed and astonished they asked are they are not all those who are speaking Galileans and how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language Parthians Medes and Lamanites and residents of Mesopotamia Judea and Capricornia Pontus and Asia Farlesia and Amphidia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, and both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and, and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and per per perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, but just those, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophets of the In the last days it will be, God declares, and I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. 
and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show the importance of heaven above, and signs on earth below, blood and fire and smoke and mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. A responsive reading is Psalm 104. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is the levy which you are made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
you know him and have seen him? Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip? Still do not know me. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything, and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Pentecost, the holiday made for the Ohio State University. <laughs> if you looked in your bulletin, uh, the little pamphlet, you probably saw that I uh, originally came to you from Michigan. And um, I won't say any more about that, so <laughs> don't worry about that. Although, um, one of my first meetings um, a few months ago, when I was new in the diocese, um, was with the Commission on Ministry, and, and we were getting to know each other, and Somebody said to me, well, what's it going to take to turn you into a Buckeye? And I said, you know, I've been born and raised in Michigan, lived most of my life there. I'm not sure that's going to happen. And they really didn't like that answer. <laughs> I'm not sure the Commission on Ministry is very happy with me right now. Well, I'll just have to see. Anyway, if you, um, if you were to spend more time with me and if you were to listen to my sermons on a regular basis, you'd probably discover that I tend to talk about movies a lot. In my preaching, there are a number of them that um, just seem to come up for me all the time. 
One of my favorite movies from the 1980s is Clash of the Titans. Yeah, exactly, right? Yes, and they did a new one a few years ago and it was okay, but I'm certainly partial to the original one. Um, the special effects are kind of laughable now, right? But it had an amazing cast, like Laurence Olivier and Maggie Smith and Burgess Meredith, and now it's a cult classic. Clash of the Titans tells the story of Perseus from Greek mythology who has kind of a humble backstory, but he's destined to become a great hero. He saves an entire city-state from destruction, willed by a jealous and prideful goddess. Thetis, the sea goddess, is angry that Zeus, the king of the gods, has decided to punish her son for his sins while shielding his own son from danger. And at just that moment, the queen of Joppa, Cassiopeia boasts that her daughter is more beautiful than all the gods, even the great goddess Thetis. Now Thetis knows that Perseus, Zeus's son, has fallen for the princess, and so she curses Joppa and proclaims that the princess must be sacrificed to restore her honor, or else the whole city will be destroyed. Perseus is now on a quest to find a way to save the princess and the city from this goddess's wrath. Now, like many of the heroes of myth, Perseus is an attractive young man, and some of the other gods have taken a liking to him. They also know that Thetis is acting recklessly, and if she has her way, the delicate balance of power among the gods will be thrown into chaos. Hoping to avoid an intra-divine war, they give Perseus special gifts, weapons, and things like that, with magical powers to give him an edge in the coming battles. Now, the story ends in the way that we all expect and can predict without much difficulty. The hero Perseus goes on his quest, suffers setbacks, finds inner strength, and vanquishes the evil one that stands between his princess and his eternal fame. Some decades ago, Joseph Campbell taught us about the hero cycle that we see in mythological systems all over the world. The story of Perseus fits that familiar system that we see in ancient myths and contemporary ones like the Skywalker saga in the Star Wars universe. Now, much has been made of this hero cycle, and some have attempted to say it even applies to the Christian story, and sometimes to the great heroes of the Hebrew Bible as well. Some of those points line up. But I think that the Christian story has a uniqueness that doesn't quite work with the hero cycle. Not certainly today in the story of Acts that features, like the Perseus story, divine intervention into the narrative lives of humanity. The story of the earliest Christian's experience of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost is one that we tell in the church again and again like the mythological stories of the cultures that we find ourselves embedded in. Because these stories make sense out of the seemingly random chaos and delightfulness, and for many, desperation, that is, human life. The stories of our people tell us who we are and how we are in relationship with each other and with the divine. The Christian story tells Christians about how the divine one has ordered creation entrusted it to our care, and about how the Divine One continues to order our lives and shape the gifts that we are given to embark upon the quest that we have been set on. And perhaps more clearly than the mythologies of many cultures that have shaped our world, the Christian story invites us to see the Divine One's plan for us as an outgrowth of that one's own total and complete love for its creation. The Divine One's total and complete giving of its own self for the flourishing of all. In the events of the Feast of Pentecost, which we hear in the book of Acts today, something really rare takes place. A spiritual encounter with the Divine, which includes physical sensations, visible fire, a loud sound of rushing wind. It was audible to everyone present. And following that, outsiders, onlookers, were able to observe that those experiencing the phenomenon were suddenly able to speak in languages they otherwise could not have known. 
Now, the usual response in the face of the unexplainable is just to deny that it ever happened. It's fake news. Some claim the disciples were drunk. But Peter gets up and delivers what we now understand to be the first Christian sermon ever preached, in which he explains that these events are explained by the long tradition of the faith. Peter proclaims that the day of the Lord has arrived. His sermon, quoting from the words of the prophet Joel, as evidence of his claim that the new thing that God has been preparing for the world has begun to break into the world, and that these amazing gifts, these signs of God's power and presence, are the signs of that inbreaking of the Lord's great and glorious day. I think this is breathtaking in the face of this hero cycle that we've heard of. In the Christian story, we see a God, the God, giving gifts to humankind as an outgrowth of God's unending love for the world. Not a tactical move to get an advantage over another divinity that God is quarreling with. No, no. Rather, as a sign and symbol of the goodness we were made from. The love that is poured into us through our creation and for us, sealed in our very being by our baptism. Jesus promises and makes good that the Holy Spirit would come and be with us after his ascension into heaven. This God is with us always and everywhere. We cannot lose God's favor like a jealous sea goddess who gets her feelings hurt by a boastful queen. No, this God is above such nonsense. This God loves that foolish queen as much as the virtuous acolyte. There is no system of merit in God's kingdom. In God's kingdom, all are given the gift of the Holy Spirit, not just the apostles, not just the royalty, not just the clergy, but everyone who walks in and out of this life is accompanied by and constantly loved and cared for by the Holy Spirit. There is nothing like that in the great stories of the Greeks. Our God is with us now and always, and our gifts are gifts of love. And in our story, we are reminded each time that we come to this table to commune with our God, that we forget this truth. We lose sight of this astounding and unearned love. We get a little too full of ourselves, and we lose our way, and we call that sin. We imagine that we can build a tower into the heavens. We can splash our name on everything we own. We believe that we did it all because of our own accomplishments, our own industry, our own amazingness. Forgetting that all our life is predicated upon God's initiative and not our own, we stumble, we fall, we suffer pain. And if we are wise in the least, we remember whose we are and where our blessings come from. My hope for today, for this Feast of Pentecost, is that in the moments when we stumble and falter, we have some gift that comes to our attention and reminds us of the constant presence of the Holy Spirit. Christians for centuries have used things like prayer books and religious tokens and prayer beads and special clothing and countless other practices to remind us of our enduring relationship with God. Many churches, like this one, Remind their members to wear red on the Sunday of Pentecost. And that, too, is a small way that we remember that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit, also called the Comforter, to be with us on our journey of faith and hope, and to remind us that we are not pawns on the chessboard of a group of small-minded gods, but rather the living embodiment of God's hopes and joy for a world transformed in the image of God's love for us. Let us be that love when we leave this place today. Let us remind the world that we belong to God and that only through that love will any of us find the peace that Christ promises us. We do not have to be afraid when we fall because we are never alone. Amen. Amen.
Please stand as you are able. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Friends, the prayers of the people, as you probably already know, are found in your bulletin. Friends, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Our God is with us and in us. Therefore, let us pray. Come, Spirit of truth. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy God, by your Spirit, you gave birth to your church. May our many members <clears throat> be the one body of Christ in this world, and then lead us by your Holy Spirit in the ways of truth and love. Come, Spirit of truth. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Holy God, you gave your disciples the ability to speak in the languages of the people. May we also speak about your deeds of power throughout the world that all may know of your salvation. Come, Spirit of truth. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Holy God, the, the earth is full of your creatures. May all who look to you be given food in due season. Open your hand in desolate places and fill the hungry with good things. Come, Spirit of truth. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy God, you poured out your Holy Spirit in your holy city, Jerusalem. Pour out your Spirit in our own city. Raise up prophets and dreamers. Give us vision. Come, Spirit of truth. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy God, you give the gift of healing by your Spirit. Bring healing and wholeness to all those on our hearts and minds this day. In your, my, in your might and mercy, renew the face of the earth. Bring renewal to those in need. Those of us who have special prayers on our hearts today, please pray them now, either silently or aloud.
Come, Spirit of truth. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy God, you adopt us as your children, joint heirs with your Christ. In your mercy, keep us and love us. May we and all who have entered into your joy rest in your presence forever. Come, Spirit of truth. Come, Holy Spirit. We pray for the following parish families this week. Tooney and Nora King, Steve and Sue Nor, Sherry Kreinbill, Ann Leonard, and Kevin and Missy McCarty and Maggie. Come, Spirit of Truth. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard, regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Come, Spirit of Truth. Come, Holy Spirit. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We greet one another with a sign of peace.
Oh, right, right. I'll wait until after. You can wear it during the welcome. announcements for our life together as God's people. Once again, I want to say welcome and thank you to Canon Spencer for preaching today. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. And his official title is Canon for Transitions and Congregational Ministry. Correct? Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. Okay. And, and as I said, he'll be meeting with the vestry um, after our worship today. Um, just a, a few uh, quick announcements, and then I know Keith has um, one as well. We continue to look for a parish administrator. We've got a um, couple resumes now, um, and so we'll be hopefully moving forward on that soon. In the meantime, Elaine is helping with the bulletin and with getting the catch out every Thursday. Elaine, thank you so much for your ministry. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, lots of things happening. Children's ministry, uh, of course, today. Thank you for these lovely hats we're wearing. Well, I'll put mine on after Eucharist. And then um, we have another session uh, in a few weeks on Father's Day. Uh, men's group, women's group, um, and then there's a notice in the bottom of the front announcement sheet and on the back about um, the Episcopal Church at Pride and a Pride Mass that's coming up, um, as, and so you can read about that. And Keith, why don't you come forward? I just note about the uh, men's group. We're we'll meeting this Tuesday night here at church, 6 to 8. It'll be a bring your own food evening. Uh, this for us to decide how we want to move forward with the year for the men's ministry. Uh, in the past, we've done a lot of uh, dinners at the restaurants. Uh, that started to seem to fade out a little bit. So I want to find out what kind of ministry uh, the men of our congregation want to do throughout the year. So please join me for a night of uh, fellowship, friendship, love, and some planning for the year. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Any other announcements from anyone? Okay, then let us with gladness present the offerings of our life and labor to the Lord.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples, to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. <laughs> subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God of promise, 
You have prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The risen Christ invites us to his table. Come, eat, and be satisfied.
please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe into your spirit life. Amen. May the Spirit who overshadowed Mary when the Eternal Son came among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. Amen. May the Spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.